Brendan E. Reed, and I race with Inception Racing. Started when I left the tech world and wanted kind of a personal challenge and passion to sink my time into and energy and really fell in love with racing. So we started in GT4 as a hobby, uh, jumped into GT3 still in, as kind of a hobby in 2020. We did the um, International GT Open seven or eight races a year, uh, but really got the bug. And when you get the bug, you get so obsessed with it, you get so passionate about it that you just want to keep doing it. You want to do more and you want to keep raising the level. One of the coaches that I work with, Kevin Madsen, he recommended uh, sim racing and, and sim as a form of training. He said, talk to the guys at CXC. They're, they will uh, help you out and they have the, the best sim you can get. I went down and got to experience their studio simulator, the big rig. In a way, it was a little overwhelming because it, it was a big system. Um, but I remember leaving thinking, uh, for starters, I'm not very good at sim and I need a lot more practice. Um, but it did seem to be a great way to start to learn the track. All the other pros that I've been driving with, they're all using simulators. They all are constantly talking about how valuable the simulator is. The goal was become more consistent and uh, become better at endurance racing. And to do that, we really needed to take the next step. And a lot of the pros said the next step is gonna come from more training, more practice from the simulator. We wanted to get the simulator to be as similar to the car that we're in as possible. So we went back to CXC and said, can we get our real wheel on the simulator? And they said, absolutely. We also looked at getting the pedals, the throttle and the brake to feel as close as possible to the real car. There are things that surprised me on the simulator, which was uh, initially how challenging it is and then how quickly you can get the hang of it. You go from spinning out or crashing on every other turn to finishing laps without crashing to finishing multiple laps without crashing and finally you get to a place where you're starting to focus on getting your time down to that similar delta that you have on the track to a pro. You're now getting it down on the simulator. Once you get the hang of that, you can use the simulator to learn the track before you get there. And that was one of the biggest advantages, I think. We're doing tons of events. These are events that um, you don't have that much practice time, but you're gonna be in the car for a long period in the race, especially in endurance racing. You need to be super consistent. And the more you can practice and prep beforehand, you can jump on the, the track in the real car and you're instantly able to be much better than if you're just learning where it goes for the first time. We had a big important race in Hockenheim for the GT World Challenge Europe event. We got there ready to practice and we ended up having a car problem. That shortened our four hour uh, free practice window down to two hours. It meant that we all had less time to spend dialing in the car and for me, learning the track. In this particular moment, because I had done so much sim practice, I was able to go out and in the first three to four laps, they came on the radio and said, okay, Brendan, we don't need you to go any faster. In fact, if you went at that pace, we're set for the race. And I said, yeah, I, I feel actually like I'm not gonna necessarily improve that much. This, this feels a lot like the sim. And that was a pretty incredible moment. We kicked off the race and we ended up winning in our class. And it was just an awesome experience. And I think a huge testament to how powerful the sim can be.